James Calm, the guy on the bike. And we're here at the very west side of Chelsea. We're going to run into Schroeder Merrill. Oh, there's Lisa Schroeder having a smoke in the rain. We're going to run into Schroeder Merrill. See an exhibition by Lori Hogan. And the title of this show is Monkey Brains. an artist I've been watching since uh, she first came on the scene about 10 years ago in Williamsburg. And now she's over here with these big time Chelsea galleries. This is titled The Sleep of Reason Produces Monsters. And this is Lori's largest piece in the show. I was always impressed with her traditional chops, ability to render these animal forms with a very sharp detail. Although everything does have kind of a neon color scheme to it. Let's take a look here at some of the details. Also able to uh, sort of anthropomorphize her her subjects and makes even these lizard, lizards have a kind of humanistic uh, look to them. We'll take a little look at her series of monkey paintings. This is called Wonder White. Nice polka dotted monkeys. Venus and Furs. These pieces are all 22 by 22 oil on panel. It's an accidental tourist. She's become even more more confident with her rendering than she was when I started looking at the work. Daisies. I saw that guy in the subway the other day. And she used to make very large and uh, ornate baroque frames that she'd go leaf and would put on the pieces. Maybe we'll ask her why she stopped using the frame device. This is titled, What Ails Us? 100 Most Prescribed Pharmaceuticals in the Nation, 2008. And each one of these panels is three by four inches. And they've got to get a separate list so I can see all of the different drug names. We've got little guinea pigs. This one's probably on an anti-stomach acid medication. I think that should go together as a set. And now we're talking to the artist Lori Hogan. Congratulations on the show. Thank you. Um, I've been watching your work for quite a while out in Williamsburg and then you came over here with the big leaguers. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting old. Um, we were going to talk a little bit about your 100 pharmaceuticals, America's most popular pharmaceuticals. You want to say what inspired you on that? Sure. The piece is called, the, the entire title of the piece is What Ails Us? The 100 right. Most Commonly Prescribed Pharmaceuticals in the Country. Are you on ph a pharmaceutical yourself or is uh, it personal interest here? It's a, it's a personal interest. It, uh, uh, I pop an occasional Ambien. Uh, an when occasional a, when a, Ambien. An occasional Ambien. You know, the, is it the, good? The substance doesn't work if you take it more than three days in a row. Uh, but when you need it, you need it. I've had, I've been a lifelong insomniac. But uh, um, the, the subject matter of this, the show uh, is, is essentially, you know, the title of the show is Monkey Brains, and the subject matter of the show um, um, it deals with the idea uh, of, of um, location 
happens in, in, in capitalism where human desire and human cognition um, find uh, expression. And the desire for pharmaceuticals um, and the fact that pharmaceutical industry has pretty much abandoned good science in favor of marketing. That's um, right. Uh, Making a buck. Right. It's an example of exactly that, that propensity and that interest. And um, so it, it, it sort of interested me as I started this research, uh, for example, that since the introduction of uh, Prozac in 1992, there have been approximately 230 million prescriptions for it in a population of 350 million people, which leads me to suspect that... I mean, certainly when you need psychoactive pharmaceuticals, they're a lifesaver. But it can't possibly be that that many more children have ADHD over the course of 10 years. So it led me to sort of investigate what the most commonly prescribed pharmaceuticals are and how they're marketed. And so each of these guinea pigs, and I chose guinea pigs as the animal. Right, because, the obvious reason, right. the testing. and Yes. Okay. And also they look like pills. I mean, I'm actually more interested in your painting technique. Okay. Now, when I started seeing your work uh, in Williamsburg, uh, probably about eight or ten years ago, you were having uh, all your pieces had large baroque frames on there with yes. gold leaf. Where did the frames go? Well, um, I just stopped making them. I mean, it... it uh, you found that it did, spent too much time making the frames and not enough time painting? or It was more like the... the a distraction uh, from the images that you wanted to deal with? It was more consumer capital, I mean, they were sort of designed to, to parody a certain kind of aesthetic of excess that was really, really, and a certain kind of fetishization of history that was really common in the 90s. The frame sort of mimicked um, or parodied that aesthetic. But it also has a long tradition in art history and yes. uh, a lot of different uh, approaches and uh, yeah. as well as stylistic things that you could sort of tag on with the framing elements. Right. But exactly. you just and dumped that and went without the frames. When, when, you know, I'm a, obviously, I'm a, min, I'm a minimalist, right? You know, so I just like decided to, to sort of cool down the aesthetic, which seemed to be um, what was happening in, in, in well, consumer capitalism. I so. wouldn't call you a minimalist. I think yeah. you use a lot of uh, techniques yeah. of the old masters. Do a lot of was, a lot of glazing and overpainting. And right. now, how do you work on your figures? Do you get work from photographs or? In the case of that, no. Of, of actual animals. Um, in the case of you have children, pigs, I do. Okay, that's. Uh -huh. Those are some good animals to look at. They absolutely are. Um, and uh, we have the requisite pets uh, for a child. Okay. And I, I spent some time playing with a friend's guinea pig uh, for the purposes of this. Did piece. you give the pig, guinea pig any drugs? I did not drug the guinea pig. No. Um, Alcohol, tobacco, uh, caffeine. No, actually, none. No, I, I treated the guinea pig with uh, the appropriate sort of. Um, uh, vegan respects that it, it deserved. Okay. Um, but yeah, the, the painting technique is, is really traditional. The only difference being that um, I, use I use a lot of glazes with a lot of um, um, pigments that have not been available that long. Like quinacridone colors, which is a... a well, when you say not that long, ten, start well, from the 20s and 30s. Well, quinacridone colors, um, I think, were invented in the 50s as automotive paints, as automotive pigments for candy apple automotive finishes. Um, and Are you attracted to that kind of uh, absolutely. California hot rod colors? <laughs> absolutely. I notice you have a lot of kind of neon yes. color things going. Yes. But yeah, the, the painting technique is, is very traditional um, in the sense that I work in layers and I start with a, a gessoed surface, although I do use um, modern materials, I mean oil painting materials, but they're nevertheless contemporary ones. Well, are you using like classic uh, varnishes or are you using some of these uh, automotive lacquers and things like that? I'm actually using um, uh, alkyd resin, like liquid. Okay, uh, sure. And galkid, uh, stuff like that. Um, I, you know, the materials scientists at, at Windsor Newton and, and Gamblin really do know what they're doing. I mean, they're yeah, so we never excellent. pay any attention to those guys anyway. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to cut this off. Okay. Really. Thanks, congratulations. My pleasure. Thank you very much. This is James Calm reporting on Lori Hogan Monkey Brains. Oh, Schroeder Romero, 637 West 27th Street. Thanks, Kate.